Zoom. This is on live stream on uh, YouTube every single week at the same time. Uh, you just heard the uh, notification go off. We're going to close out that notification and we're going to let this redirect and then I will close it out. And we are live on YouTube. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you will get a notification when you're out just in case you forget about training. And uh, so you will uh, you will receive that. Tonight, we're going to stay in the AWS control panel. Uh, for all of you that sent such great comments last week, uh, it's been a long time since we stepped through the control panel, and it's always good as a refresher for some. Uh, for all the new folks that have come in, uh, I, I didn't realize what a difference it would make, but uh, I, I appreciate all the kind words from last week's training. We're going to do the exact same thing today. Uh, we're going to go right into the control panel. I am going to move the screen over, and I'm going to share this screen with you. Can everybody see the AWS screen here? Let me back up. I want to go in just like we're going into an app. Everybody can see the AWS screen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And this is the app that we uh, worked on last week. Let me delete this app. And, and, and while I'm doing that, let me just let you know, if you ever have apps that you've been practicing on, uh, you can see up here the uh, number is 3,482, 186 of 348, 3482 used. Uh, when you delete an app, this goes right back into your pool. So you never lose an app. That's why I always say it's extremely important that you go in and you utilize the system and you practice, practice, practice. Uh, the more you practice, the better you get. And when you're done practicing with a particular app, just come up here and delete it. Yes, delete. Click continue. And you see it goes right into the pool. It was 186, now it's 185. So it goes right back in the pool. And that way you never lose an app, okay? Tonight we're going to go back in and we're going to go into Edit Web App. Let me turn this off or it's going to... Wear us out tonight. Tonight, we're going to go into the content settings uh, just to give you an idea where we're going to be over the next couple of weeks. We're going to go into content tonight, and we're going to try to make it through as many of these buttons as we possibly can. Uh, and then next week, we will, if we don't finish content tonight, we will go into content and finish content next week. And then we will go into settings. Uh, we're going to go through each and every button here. The last thing we'll do, we will go through the extras tab over here. Once we complete that, uh, I'm going to go, I'm, we're going to take you through and I'm going to show you how to go up. If you've got the branded version where you can go in and set up your website, we're going to go through the website, the sales rep feature, every single thing on this panel, we're going to look at over the next few days or a few weeks. Uh, Kenny Dutton is so kind every week to take our uh information that we use here on training he breaks it down and he puts it minute by minute and puts it in the description of the youtube channel and this training is also going to be put in uh, a playlist which will be very helpful for you the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the home page the home page is a very important tab because it literally controls everything on this page right here this is considered your home page now for those of you who who don't understand how the mobile web app works and exactly how uh, this thing is put together. The more pages you have, they, they, the, the more load time it takes because what happens with the mobile web app is the pages literally load on top of each other. So, and when I say the more time, I'm not talking minutes or hours. I'm just talking just a, just a few more microseconds. And what happens is, is these pages are stacked and that's what gives it the native feel where you don't have to wait on a page to load. When you go to contact us, 
on the mobile phone, it's immediately going to pop up. And the reason it immediately pops up, because everything is already loaded. It's loaded right underneath each other. Okay, so think about it as a bunch of pieces of paper stacked on top of each other. And this is the top piece of paper right here. Okay, this is your top page. Your top page contains your header. Your, your image header goes here. Your, all of your tabs, your buttons uh, goes on the front page. These can also be duplicated on the other pages, but they don't have to be, okay? But these are the things you want on your page, your call us, your email us, and all of this is controlled from within the content. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to home page. Let me pull up real quick YouTube. The most famous question asked is uh, how do I put a YouTube video in? And we're just gonna go right down these buttons here. So you can see here, the first thing is images. Now what an image does is it puts an image right below your header, okay? Some people use this image just as a picture. Some people use this image uh, as a clickable link. You can use it for many different reasons. Uh, since this is a tire shop, I'm going to put a tire image under there and I'm just simply going to come here and I'm going to say upload. I'm going to find a tire image. This particular tire image is 500 by about 350. And I'm going to say add. Now, I pull this image directly off of Shutterstock. I didn't buy this image. It's got the Shutterstock on here. I'm not going to use this, but let me recommend, and I did this for a reason. I had someone send me an app the other day, and they pulled an image off of Google. And on that image off of Google, it didn't have Shutterstock, but it had someone else's watermark all over it, and they had done that for a customer. You cannot use images that are, are not, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Michael Cahill? Uh, they're not common stock, okay? You have to pay for these images. You cannot use an image that's got someone's watermark on it. That means that you're using that image Ill illegally. So make sure, and I did this for a specific reason, that you do not have a Creative Commons, thank you, uh, that you do not have their watermark on these images when you put them on. And I'm going to show you in a second in YouTube how you can look for Creative Commons images. So you and also you can make this image a link. Let's say that I want to um, have this go to my join our list page. Maybe I say uh, something here like uh, click here to uh, join our list. Yeah, royalty free, royalty royalty free with no copyright. Make sure you can get in serious trouble using other people's stuff. Okay, serious trouble. So we're going to be able to attach this image to this page, and I'm going to simply click Save. I'm going to come up here to the preview. I'm going to hit Reload. And the image comes up, and you can see that it's hyperlinked to the subscribe page. So when I click on that, it immediately goes to the subscribe page. So I can put text on there to uh, have call to actions and I can do different things with it. Uh, I've only used this once in the entire time I've ever used this platform, but this option is here. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a guy that uses this a lot. He built one of the most beautiful flower app shop, uh, flower shop apps that I have ever seen in my life. And he used this particular uh, mode of the app but play with this and, and do you can do different things with it, but that option is there. The next option is the text and HTML option. You can literally come in here and you can put text. This is simply WYSIWYG. You can do anything with this you want. I can put, hi, this is Carrie. I can come underneath it. I can upload an image. Now I can upload the exact same image that I put in before. 
but this is going to be really big. So you're going to have to resize this image. Now, what you can do is you can, you can literally, because this is WYSIWYG, you can drag this image to the size you want it to be. We'll let that load. That image is pretty good size. Now, you can see that the image is really large. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this image, and I'm going to come up, and I'm going to drag this image down, and I'm going to resize it. I resized it a little bit too much. I'm going to put that underneath there. I'm going to bring it back out a little bit. And that way you can size your image to where you want it to be, okay? Now, you can bring larger images in here. The best size image for this is about 280 pixels wide. And you can see also that there's a border around this. Now, many of you will, will uh, email me or call me or call Mark and say, hey, I've got a border up there. I don't know why. I'm going to show you in a minute how, why that's created. Sometimes there is some uh, code that hangs up inside this particular text.html, uh, forward slash HTML. And what you have to do is you have to open this up and you have to back out of it in order to get rid of it. This box right here, let me save that. I'm going to be flipping back and forth here just, to, just on a couple of things so that you can see what controls that box. Slow, slow, slow tonight. Our internet connections here are real slow today for some reason. I don't know if it's, I'm, I'm not sure. Let's go into advanced. We're going to come down here and you can see content body. Right here, this con in the content body, this box is controlled by all of these tabs right here. I can take all of that out. I can completely get rid of it. I can take the padding away from it. I can fade it. I can put a border around it. I, I mean, there's so many things you can do with this. I can put padding around it. You can see I can bring it down. I can put content padding in where I can put padding. Content padding is what goes around this image right here. You can see it being pushed to the left, to the right. Uh, content spacing has to do with the padding around uh, the box itself. But just play, you can play with these and, and set these up. I normally leave it at zero. The radius of the border is controlled by here, and this controls the actual border size. And this is your border color and your background color. And you can see it's orange right now. That's because I've got the transparency set here. We're going to put the transparency all the way across, okay? Now, for this particular training right now, I'm going to leave that box in there. Let's go back to content, back to home page. If I want to, I can put a link on this image right here. I'm sorry that that link the that didn't I didn't get the link on there. Hang on just one second. Let me do that again. I didn't get that image captured. You got to make sure you capture the image. Okay, now we've put the link on there. You see that, that how the, where that's turned blue as a link? Now I'm going to save that. We'll go back over here to preview. And now you can see this has a link to it. And it will open up to App Wizard Studio. Let me go back. You 
can also link it to something in the app. That is a slow. Let's go back into the app. Back to content. You getting all this, uh, Kenny Dutton? <laughs> okay, let's go to homepage. We're still going to be in the exact same box. The text forward slash HTML box. This is also where you, and I'm going to back all of this out completely. See how that box is still there? What happens is, is sometimes there's some HTML code that's locked inside of here. You come to the source code, you can't see it, but it's locked inside there. If you would just back that space out, back it out completely, you will get, get away from that. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to come over to YouTube. Y'all just tell me, can you see the YouTube channel up here? Or do I need to show that on the screen? Can everybody see the YouTube channel? I take everybody. Okay, you can. Thank you. Okay. What you're going to do is, is you're going to come in and you're going to get your video, whatever video you want. All right. It doesn't matter. Whatever video that you want. Let me pause this. We're going to come down. What the heck? Oh. YouTube has changed. How many of you have been in YouTube in the last three days? How many of you have been into YouTube in the last three days? Yeah, they've changed everything here. Everything on YouTube has changed. The, ch the pan channels have changed. The panels have changed. And I cannot get used to it. Okay? So now this is a pop-up box. Okay? We're going to go to embed. And this is a comp – everything's a pop-up box. So we don't want to show suggested videos. We don't want to show player controls. We don't want to show video title. We don't want to show any of that stuff. Okay. And we're going to come up and the iframe code is now here. It used to be inside there, but this is all uh, boxes now, pop-up boxes. We're going to pull this code. I'm going to copy it. Make sure, can everybody see my screen here? I'm going to go into source code. I'm going to paste that where it says 560. I want to make that 100%. And the reason you make it 100% in the, in the emulator, if I, if I left it, whatever, it's going to hang over. On an iPhone, it will hang over and will not fit the screen properly. It will on an Android. If you got an Android, you'll never see the problem. But on an iPhone, if you don't make it 100% to fit the screen properly, it will not fit the screen. So make that 100%. 100% also works on the iPhone. And I'm going to change the height to 158. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to center it. And you can see it fits right in the center of my box. When you make it 100%, it makes it the width of the the uh, parameters that it's in. So uh, if if you don't, it's going to hang over this box. And I'll sh I'll show you that here real quick. Let's make this 280, which is what it normally would be. And it didn't do it. Yes, there there it goes. Okay, see how it's hanging out of the box? It will hang out of the box if you don't put it on 100%. And I don't know why it does that. And Mark is the one that gave me the code for this, and I believe always believe Mark. There, we get a full fit. And you can also adjust this, this uh, padding and everything on the other side over there. 
Everybody understand putting a YouTube video in? I'm going to take that out, actually. Okay, you see I took that out and the, and the box goes away. The next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at images. I mean, I'm sorry, links. There's a couple of different ways you can do links, but there's one thing you want to be to understand is you can put the links anywhere you want them to go. Okay. So if I've got a link turned on, let me turn this, this link on here. I can either put it at the top. I can put it in the middle. I can put it at the bottom. I can put it wherever I want, wherever there's an arrow, you can move these around. I can turn whichever boxes off I don't want or tabs or whatever you want to call them. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the share web app thing is working now. Uh, Mark fixed that for us just the other day. We we're having, I don't know if there was a bug to it. I can turn them off. I can turn them on. I can move them wherever you want to move them. Sometimes you don't want to show any tabs here at all. Maybe you've got the, the, the tab bar up at the top and a tab bar at the bottom or something like that. You can turn them all off at the same time. Show on home screen? No. And what that does is it turns off all the tabs. You don't have to go through and do them individually. It turns everything off at one time. That way you don't have to sit there and mess with it. And if you add a, if you add a page or something, it's automatically turned off and you can put the page where you want it. But we're going to turn it on for this particular training. You can see I've got an email us button up here. So I've got the email us button turned off. I don't like to duplicate things. Gotcha. Uh, it's storming everywhere. I, I don't know what's going on with these storms. It's, uh, it's about 80, 78 degrees here right now. It's normally 150. Okay. So that's your links. Links are very easy to set up, very easy to use. One of the biggest questions I get is, hey, I don't see a, I don't see a link. And what you've done is you've used a template. And on those templates, they're set up exactly like you see here. All you have to do is come back and you can turn on the links that you want. And or turn them off and or put them where you want to put them. Any questions on this at all? Any questions? Social media links. These are the social media links that you put in under content. These are the buttons right here that you see. You can turn those on and turn those off. If you don't want any social media links on there, you can turn them on and turn them off. The landing page, any questions on social media links? The landing page is just that. How many of you use landing pages in your marketing today? Uh, maybe, you're, maybe you use landing pages just to uh, get signups. You've built an app that's strictly a landing page and you can get signups. It's exactly what it says it is. You can make the home page whatever you want it to be. And, the landing page, the, the biggest reason it was created was to be able to set up a join our list page, a capture page right on the front page. Now, if you're using this as a landing page, you can do one of two things. You can leave the links on and you can move the landing page right above the links so the landing page is first, okay? And then you have your links and or you can completely turn off your links as I showed you before. They're completely gone. And all you have is your landing page there. Does everybody see this box pop up right here? Does everybody see the red box that popped up at top? That's what I was talking about earlier. Sometimes you will do some things in here. It, why it happens, we, we have dug and dug and dug and dug. Uh, but to get rid of it, some reason when you this triggers 
uh, some code that you can't see, but that code is always right here. All you have to do is back it out and it goes away. Okay. It's just one of those little bugs in the system that we've yet to find. But you can put this anywhere you want it. And you see when I moved that, it did it again. So if you're moving these around and you're, you're doing things and you see that pop up, just simply come right here and back it out. Panorama image. What this will do in... Um, I've used it a couple of times. It's not stable on all phones, but it literally allows you to put an image in there where you can, uh, you can take an image on your phone and you can do a 360 in a room and then you can upload that image in the phone and it will allow you to move the image. And it's great for real estate. Uh, Android phones, <laughs> Absolutely, it does. It will happen to you. The, but the panorama image is great for uh, uh, real estate companies to use that. And you just upload the image, and they literally can take their finger on the phone and spin the image around. Uh, it's not real stable for Android. Okay, it's not real stable for Android. Any questions on the home page whatsoever? Any questions on how to put a YouTube video in? And remember, YouTube has made a ton of changes and I cannot get used to them. And I'm in there every single day. I'm gonna show you real quick about images. This is very, very important. If you don't get anything else out of training tonight, uh, it's this. We're going to pull up motorcycle images. Now, you would think, oh, gosh, man, there's a whole, a whole bunch of motorcycle images. Let me just go in there and pull off a bunch of these. You can't just do that. You want to come over here to more? I'm sorry, settings. Is it settings or tools? Tools. Usage rights. Okay. It's here under tools. Usage rights. Not filtered by license. Labeled for reuse with modification. So if you do something to it to modify it, maybe you're going to put uh, the business uh, name over top of it or something like that. That's reuse with modification. Labeled for reuse. That means you can reuse it. Labeled for non-commercial reuse with modification. Let me explain non-commercial, all right? Non-commercial means that you cannot get paid if using that image. If you use it for any other thing else, okay, and you're not making money on it, you can use that image. But you cannot use it and resell it and make money with that image. That's what non-commercial reuse means, all right? So you want to stick with labeled for reuse with modification and labeled for reuse. Watch how many of these images go away. A ton. Okay. Now I could come in here and I don't know what that is right there. Maybe uh, uh, I know what that is. That's a Harley. So I can come in here and I can use this Harley Davidson image because it says I can if I modify it. So what I can do is I can come in and I can put a company logo in here. I can put me a nice half circle with a company name on it. And maybe down here on the bottom, uh, put a uh, uh, company address or something. I have to come in and I have to do something that alters that image. I cannot use it exactly as it is, but I can use it if I put something on there. Labeled for reuse, that just means I can pull it off and use it any way I want to. And you can see that most of them you labeled for reuse was also labeled for, with modification. I can tell you, and I can tell you because, from, from personal experience, 
And I did not know this until it happened. Companies will pixelate. They will take one or two pixels somewhere on this picture and they will put an initial or they will put a code. You will not be able to see it. It's very, 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 very small. They will find that image and when, because they have people that are constantly searching who's using their images and they will pull that image off and they will put it, they will blow it up, and they will find their code. Maybe it's uh, this same color gray right here, and it's right here about maybe two words or, or my image. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing what they do. They will find it, and uh, they, they will get you. Uh, usually, the first off, you'll get a cease and desist, and then you're going to get a letter that says, hey, you're going to pay us some money, and it's usually a good sum of money. So be very careful when using images. Any questions at all? Now, if you're using a logo from somebody else and they've already got it all done, you're not responsible for that, okay? You're not responsible. I have built real estate apps and I have built insurance apps where Allstate came back and uh, they didn't like the color blue because their blue is, um, is patented and copyrighted. And uh, they sent me the color for the blue. I had to change the blue on the app. So there's a lot of things that, that you have to really be careful with. I mean, it, not to scare you, but that's, it's just the way it is. This is a great page right here because this allows you to do anything you want to do. Okay. You can put videos in here. Uh, you can put coupons in here. You can put simple uh, two coupon text. Uh, we're going to say coupon. And we're going to say get 10% off. When presenting this coupon at the counter. Okay. And I can center this. It's all WYSIWYG. I can make it whatever font I want. Make it 14. I can center this up. I've got a yellow background, so I can come in. I can make this text red or whatever. I can make it yellow. Make it stand out. I can bold it. I can change the font family. Uh, I, can, I can come in. I can put bullet points in here. I can do really anything I want, just like any other word processor, okay? So I'm going to put coupon on here, and I'm going to come up, and I'm going to select a coupon um, icon. Oops, I typed an icon, didn't I? I'm going to put in a coupon icon. And in just a few seconds there, okay, I've created a coupon and I'm ready to go. All I have to do is save that. If I wanted to put an image in there, I could put an image in there. I can create another page. I'll use the same image I've been using. I can come up, I can upload. So if this was a coupon, I could upload the image. This WYSIWYG system is responsive, so you don't have to worry about the sizes or anything. It's going to automatically uh, put it at the right size. I could, I could center my image. I could put text above it. I could actually link this just like I did before. I can put a link on it to go to um, a sign-up page or something. I mean, get very familiar with this page. I use this all the time for coupons, all the time for coupons. Just simply hit save. Come up to home page. We've got this uh, landing page on. Let's turn the landing page off. We're going to come up. We're going to turn the links back on. 
And you can see here that I've got my coupon in my tire shop. It automatically shows up. If I want to move this coupon, maybe I want to put a tab bar on it. I will turn that off. But we'll do that uh, uh, over here uh, next week. And I've got my tire shop. So I'll save those because that's where I want it to be. Come over to preview. Reload. We have a coupon. <clears throat> Remember, I said we had the red background and we had the box around it, so that looks good. And literally, I've got a guy that does this every two weeks. He sends me the text, I put it in there, and I charge him $29 every two weeks to copy and paste and put those words on his app. Every two weeks, like clockwork. He's been doing it for two and a half years. Two and a half years. No, he don't want any image. He don't want anything. He wants it simple. And we change it out just like that. And I charge him $58 a month. And I've been doing it for two and a half years. So works out very well. Okay. And, and that's a good looking coupon. You don't need anything fancy for a coupon. It just needs to give them a call to action what to do. All right. And then we can come over and I'll show you the image here. How many of you use the HTML page? Do, do a lot of you use that HTML page? And there's the image. Okay. And we can come in once again and we can set the size of that. And it's also in the box. Now, this isn't the photo image. Uh, yeah, always. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And this isn't the uh, this isn't the photo gallery. Okay. This is simply putting an image inside the app on a page. All right. We'll leave those on there. And that is the HTML and text pages. And you can add as many of these as you want. Now, remember, the more of these you add, remember I told you in the beginning of the training, it's like uh, putting paper on top of one another. So right now we've got about 15 pieces of paper on top of each other just stacked up. They're all going to load. They're going to load from the top down. All right, so it gives you a little bit of longer load time. It's nothing major. Now, what does happen is if you put heavy images in there, uh, big images, uh, lots of megabytes, that will slow it down. But most people won't even see it. You'll see it because you always see it. Links to web pages and phone numbers. This is probably the most... Um, confusing box for some reason. I'm not sure why uh, that we have, but it is absolutely exactly what it says. Links to web pages and phone numbers. Now you can do several different things with this. Okay. We're going to say, call me. We've already got a call me button, but I'm just going to show you here. Uh, you can put a phone here. I'm just going to leave these as they are just for time's sake. But the, you can literally just go in and you, whatever icon you want it to be, select your icon. And then select what you want to do. Okay. I'm going to have them call me. I'm going to say. Now I want to show you something. I want to show you the difference in these. This is a call me button. The code for tele to, to for a clickable link for telephone, okay, is T E L colon five 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 or whatever the phone number is. Okay. If you're ever doing uh, if you're ever doing a web page and you want it to be a clickable phone number, this is the code right here. Just hyperlink that. All right. So hit save. This has become the most popular thing that we do for our customers. And of course, you can go in once again and get an icon. But you can text a mobile number. Now, the difference between text and call me is this is actually going to open up your text. Okay. So when they do that, they're going to actually open up the text on the phone and they're able to get send them a text. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hit save. And I'll come back and I'll show you the code. It's SMS, okay, SMS. 
And what that does is that 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 HTML tells the phone to open up the text uh, the texting on the app. So, call me and text is two totally different things. Uh, a lot of people get that confused when they're setting up. They'll set up a text me button because they saw it on training. Excuse me, you have to physically click on text. Okay, you have to physically click on text, and then a website. And it is what it is. You can change the link once again. And it says link to website. Do that sometimes, not very, very often. All right, Kitty, be careful, buddy. I'm going to hit save. And now we've added a call me, a text me, and a website. I'm going to go up here to hide. I'm going to go to home page. I'm going to reload this. And you can see they're right here. Call me, text me, and website. And they're right on the bottom of the app. I could put these. I would probably, I would, I would definitely put the text me up here on this bar. I'm going to turn off the website. I'm going to turn these off. I'm going to use the text me and the, some of those things in next week's training. Any questions on links, web pages, and phone numbers, setting those up at all? Anybody? My Facebook share link is broken. How do I join it back to the email and call button? Uh, hold that question, and I think I know what you're asking. Hold that question to the end here. I'm going to show about uh, three more things, and we'll, we'll go to Q&A. V-Card. This is your V-Card. What a V-Card is is a is a downloadable card that goes into your, uh, your phone book on your phone. It literally sets up a V card inside the phone. You, it's, uh, uh, you download it and it opens up and it's, uh, what do you call it? It's your phone book basically. Okay. It's your phone book. So when you build your card out, when you build it in the beginning and you fill out all your information, all the phone number, all that stuff, the, uh, website, all that, it all automatically fills in here. It automatically goes in and fills up the uh, database for your V-card. You don't really need to come in here and do anything, but if you need to come in and make any edits, you can. Uh, just simply come in and edit. This is downloadable. Okay, you go to your phone. How many of you have, have actually gone in and downloaded a V-card on your phone to see how it works? Anybody? Everybody, I hope, everybody downloaded the V-Card. They know exactly how it works. It's very important because this, this is a great selling point to your customers and your clients when you're out demonstrating this app. You need to show them how this works. That's a huge selling point and will close many deals because you show people how to get this on the app. What I like to do here, I don't put a website. I put the link to the mobile app. And the reason I do that is, is when they go into their phone, because they're not going to do this from anywhere else, when they go into their phone and they click on that link, they're going to open up the mobile app. They're not going to open up a website. So that's very, very important that you do that. Another way for them to be able to get access to the mobile web app. You don't want them going to their website. Let them go to the website from within the mobile app. You want to be able to keep that mobile app in front of people as much as possible. So what you want to do, and I just simply come up, highlight, copy, and paste, and put in the URL of the app, okay? Now, you see right there where that space is, where I, I copied a space? 
Make sure you back those spaces out of there because what will happen is, is you'll have a broken link. All right. Make sure you always check the end to make sure there's no broken links. Then you make sure that anywhere there's a slash, there's nothing broken. If you go like that right there and there's a space, that's a broken link. And they're not able to uh, access that site. Very, very important. And these are little things that as you as you learn to build and you get going, you I mean, you literally just you, you see it and, and, and you'll fix it. All right. You can add you can do the numbers. I've had one person out of all the apps I've built that wanted their home address in there. Uh, they had their business at home and they actually had a home office out back. If I ask people straight up, are you sure you want your home office in here? Because. This is a web app and it will, and it, it's everybody and their brother can get a hold of it. Do you really want someone driving to your front door? You'll find that a lot of uh, home based businesses, MLM people, uh, multi level marketing networkers, and things like that. Uh, you'll, you'll find that they, they usually do that until you explain to them that it's not just the people you give the app to, but this will go all over the web. It can be, be spotted by Google and Bing and Yahoo and all those. And it is an actual mobile web app. I mean, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be indexed. Okay. So make sure they understand that. Any questions on the V card and its purpose at all? Okay. Social media links. This is very, 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 very uh, easy to do. You just simply put in your social media links uh, that they have and you can check it right here. Can everybody see that right there? That's a broken link. All right. Let me take that out. That link would not have worked. Okay. So um, maybe I copied and pasted in there twice or something, but that link wouldn't have worked. So you want to make sure you check those things. Uh, Facebook and Twitter and all these are HTTPS, but they also have an HTTP fallback. So if you don't put the S on there, it still works. Your Twitter page. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple more in here so that I can show you some things next week with these, uh, with resizing. Instagram.com. How many of you, how many of you are selling social media pages if they don't have them? Everybody here selling social media pages for those folks that don't have them. When you say, Hey, what is your, what's your Facebook link? And they say, I don't have a Facebook page. And that's your great opportunity to add additional income to that sale. About 50, 60% of the people that you ask is going to want a Facebook page. You will be amazed at how many of those Facebook pages you can close. Instagram too. Don't sell a lot of Twitter. Uh, people still haven't caught on to Twitter. Not sure why. It's very, very popular in the media, but Twitter just it's it just hasn't caught on yet. Is it is Michael Cahill still on online? And say and you got Pinterest, yep, yeah, TripAdvisor, Foursquare, uh, Zomato, LinkedIn. YouTube. Okay. And you can actually put your YouTube channel here. Do you, do you have a lot of people that are, that, that you sell Twitter to Michael? The market I'm in just, they just don't get Twitter. I just can't get them to get them. To, and that's, I charge 99 bucks to set those up. I'd sure like to get a bunch of them, but they just don't. Just don't get it. Uh, join our list. The join our list is where they, where everything happens. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I got you, brother. I, I kind of got away from that myself. Join our list is, it's not hard to set up, but it's uh, it's pretty in depth, okay? So I'm going to stop right here. Uh, this will be the longest thing. The rest of these are pretty quick. Directory, I'm just going to breeze through because we just did a full directory trading.
It's about five till, and I know that I saw, I've seen questions go by, so I want to get to the questions. We're going to start with join our list next week. Uh, it'll take us about a half hour to finish up these next few buttons here, uh, unless there's a lot of questions. Most of these are pretty simple, uh, and they're only like here, one button, you know, just a couple of things. So, uh, and I don't want to go back past custom forms because I've got Mark. Uh, we've had some requests for custom forms. And I've got him doing some stuff. So we're going to stop here and join our list. We'll pick up with join our list next week. And uh, does anybody have any questions over what we covered? Michael Cunningham, I'm going to show you here. I think uh, I can fix your problem pretty quick. Any questions at all? It's all pretty simple stuff. If, if you have any questions, uh, watch these trainings once again. Kenny Dutton timelines these for us. And it's uh, all you have to do is click on the time frame. OK, uh, Michael Cunningham, I think I can help you fix your problem here real quick. If you will go to header. Do you know if it's on a tab bar, Michael Cunningham, or is it on a button bar? The Facebook share. Any questions? Okay, it's on the tab bar. If you'll come down to the tab bar, just remove it completely. Okay, just click on remove, remove it completely, and add it back. Okay, just add it back. And, and, it, and if it's broken, I'm not sure why it's broken. What, what is it doing? He said his Facebook share link is broken. When, when you say it's broken, what is it not doing? It's sitting below. Then what you've got is your tech. So it's sitting below here. You're saying it's down here. You've, you've probably got too many buttons up here, and the text is too big. And let me show you what I'm talking about. It, it, it kind of does like that. OK, what you have to do is you have to make the text smaller and or remove some of the buttons there. There's only so much space across there. I, I see what you're saying now. So if you just remove some of the buttons, remove the buttons until it's done and or. Come down to styles and colors. Going to advanced. Going to header. Going to tab bar. The text size is set at 12. Just bring the text size down and that'll bring, give you a little bit of room. But you, you really don't want to bring the text size down past 12. On your smaller phones, it's hard to read. Uh, so, so keep it about 12, but that's how you bring it down. And you and just remove a couple of buttons and place them somewhere else. What I like to do is I, I like to use the tab bar and the button bar in combination, and I'll bring the button bar up above the image. I do that a lot, a lot, especially when I've got a, a call to action or something. Now, if you've got a lot of buttons... And, and uh, some people have this happen. Uh, you can use the menu to create the, the uh, a place for all those buttons that you're building. And just turn on the menu. 
and create your menu, and then you'll have your menu over here on the side. The menu is a great tool. I, I've had people say, you know, I don't think people will open that. How many of you have seen a responsive website? How many of you see? How many of you have uh, opened up a responsive website, a true responsive website? I'm not talking about <clears throat> some of the crap that these companies are putting out there, and they're calling responsive. A true responsive website that actually turns it into a mobile page. Those sites literally create the little button, okay, with the lines on it, just like our menu, and it it creates a a, a, sl a slide out just like we have. So people are used to seeing that. I have people tell me all the time, I don't think nobody's going to find, they know exactly what that is. Okay. People have been using phones for a long time. They know exactly what a menu bar is. All right. A menu button. But that's what I recommend is, is using the menu. When you get more than eight buttons on the front page, uh, you need to, you need to, you need to figure out something else because Google says, okay, anything below the fold, below the fold meaning, just like a newspaper, below the fold on this app would be anything below coupon, okay? Anything below coupon. Now, as you know, every phone is different. Every phone is, some phones are big. I've got an iPhone 7S. Uh, it's big as my house. Uh, they're coming out with a new iPhone that's even going to be bigger. So you're basically walking around with a tablet next to your head. But uh, Google recommends keeping your tabs above the fold. Okay. Because what happens is people will not scroll down and keep scrolling to find out what's going on. That's why the menu button is very, very important. Very, very important. Text me the app, would you? Would you text me that app? Uh, text it to me, and I'll take a look at it. As soon as training's over, I'll go in and look at it. I will be more than happy to do that. Any more questions? I'm going to go into the Facebook image next week. And the Facebook image they're talking about is right here where it says Facebook share image. 1,200 by 630 pixels. Could you text that to me, buddy, Because I on my phone? Because I'm about to, uh, that's going to uh, go away here in about 10 minutes. First and foremost, you have to make sure that the image is 1,200 by 630, okay? I'm talking to Michael Cunningham, not Kenny Dutton. Okay? And we'll go over that next week. Any other questions? All right. Uh, We'll have this uh, video up. Well, the video is always up. Kenny will start working on the uh, timeline on it. We're going to start next week right back over here on content, and we're going to start with join our list. We're going to go through that step by step. Uh, this is another this is another area that people get confused on how to use it, what to use it for. Uh, usually, they don't know how to use it because they're not using text. So um, th that's that's normally the case. But uh, we're going to start with join our list. We'll finish up, and then we're going to go right into settings. Uh, settings is actually the easiest part of the entire thing. And then we're going to go into extras. Okay? All right. Please keep our people in your prayers. Um, 
that are in harm's way the rest of the weekend. It's going to get rough. Um, we've got a half a dozen in the uh, in the line of fire down there in Florida. Another tor uh, hurricane coming right up behind it, and another hurricane in the Gulf that has already formed. It's a Category One, so uh, a lot of a lot of things happening. And Kenny Dutton's out in a hailstorm. All right, folks. Thanks very much. God bless. Keep everybody in your prayers. Uh, keep Houston. <coughs> keep Houston in your prayers, and uh, we'll uh, we'll just keep moving forward. Everybody have a good night, and thank you so much for coming out again for Wednesday night training.